Good morning, everyone. Alfred Cromwell here, founder and president of City Tutoring. I'm making this video to show you yet another example of the appalling state of math education in many of our schools. First, let me give you some background as to what happened. Yesterday, I had a new student who was uh, a potentially new student. I haven't heard back from him yet, but he came to the offices of city tutoring. His mother is in a desperate situation because the mother is, uh, she comes from a mathematical background. And even though her son is enrolled in one of the local, I don't want to mention the specific school, obviously, but in one of the local public schools, he, he has an A average. But the mother recently was noticing that he had some gaps. That maybe, you know, nowadays with grade inflation, those of you who are watching me from another country, we have a phenomenon in the U.S. called grade inflation, which means that in many schools, students are not only are they not giving out F's, but they are also inflating grades. Uh, so students who are, for example, maybe a C student is getting a B or an A. And I'm not going to get into the rationale behind doing that because it, that would take a long time. And I know a lot of you, you like short videos, but the, the issue with that is that many students are getting A's when in reality they are nowhere near close to being A, at, at least as we understood A's before, which meant excellence, which meant uh, proficiency, outstanding, which meant something outstanding. And a lot of students are getting A's uh, just for, you know, because they don't want to give out the grades that are uh, in a more rigorous sense. So some school districts are doing that. We also have some school districts in the United States, not all, but some school districts, in fact, too many school districts. I mean, one is already one too many who uh, have decided that they won't give Fs. And they, they do this in the name of equity. Uh, they, there, there is a new dogma going around our schools. It's called DEI which stands for, uh, I mean, on paper, it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Diversity, equity, and inclusion, but it's anything but. It is a recipe for failure. And already schools were on a bad track. So you can imagine with this new dogma, there's a lot of students who are, uh, who are being failed by the system. They're being told that they're wonderful things and that they're you know, amazing in their knowledge when they're not. And so that's kind of uh, the, the background here. So anyway, I... If this was not a level test, let me make that very clear. This was not a level test because the student is only interested in tutoring, uh, you, uh, kind of like enrichment, reinforcement. So I gave the student, I, I looked at his syllabus and I said, let me see what you're doing in your math classes. Let's see what's going on. And he felt very confident. He said, I, I can ace this. I said, all right, well, if you can ace this, that's that's a good thing. I'd rather a student tell me that they can ace things and don't doesn't have to join city tutoring, right? That means that you're you're on the right track. But if you join city tutoring, that means that you need intervention as soon as possible. So I'm going to share with you all the, the test that I gave him just on quadratics and a couple of mixed uh, concepts that I thought looking at his syllabus that he should at least know. Now, to be fair, when, when I designed the test, I looked at the, the part where it says covers quadratics. So most of the test was focusing on that particular, that's what he wanted to be tutored on. That's what he wanted to know what his level was. Cause he said, well, all my teachers are saying that I, that I'm an A student. I said, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. And so I gave, uh, this test, by the way, here's a little bit of interesting info for you. Most of the questions on this test were, uh, I've kept all my tests since I was in high school. I have never thrown away any test or any note for that notes for that matter that I have ever uh, written. So all of my notes, all of my grades, in fact, I still have, one day I'll share it with you all, some of my grade, the grade books. I kept a grade book. I was the only student in my class who kept a grade book and everybody thought it was bizarre. All my classmates used to say, why do you keep a grade book? The teacher has a grade book. Yes, the teacher has a grade book, but I also want to keep track of my grades. You know, back in the day, you didn't have uh, e-grades like now. You, you just, nowadays, a lot of students just, just log into a portal and they look up their, their uh, you know, it's, it's instant. But back then we had to wait for the marking. We, we used to have marking periods, first, second, third, fourth marking period. And that's kind of how things started. So I kept a grade book to, to keep track of my, not just my math grades, by the way, I did it for English. I had a list of, and interestingly enough, students started to become interested in it. 
And they started asking me to include them in the, so I started making a list, maybe not checking it twice uh, to use the, the Christmas reference, but I kept a list of all my classmates. So now if I looked at my, if I look at my grade books, I still have the entire list of who went to school with me, uh, who was in a particular class, who the teacher was, the dates, everything was very organized. And I started uh, writing down, you know, I remember hearing, you know, back, I don't know if they still do that in most schools today, probably not because it'd probably be a FERPA violation. But back then they used to call out the grades. The teacher would say, Alfred, you got an 80. And so I would write down and I would hear other classmates and I started writing down their, their grades in my grade book. You can imagine that didn't endear me to a lot of the students, but some of them found it beneficial because then they would come to me and they would ask me. But anyway, I, I'll get that to that in, an, in another video. But the video today, so I'm going to share with you the test and I want you to leave me feedback. Let me know if you, th I don't think it's a difficult test at all. The student in the beginning, when he looked over it, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to ace this. Guess what? The student did not ace it. Not only did the student not ace the test, but actually scored a lot lower than, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll show you the score and then you let me know. All right. So as you can see on the screen, student earned a grade of 30 which is an f 30 out of 100. so the way it works is that in there were two parts to this part a and part b it says instructions in part a answer all of the questions all work or justifications must be shown in part b you may answer three questions of your choice notice that in none of the problems, this is the document that I got back. Notice that in none of the problems did the student show any work. So I'm not sure if the students now, you know, in this particular instance, if they're not reading the directions. Uh, I do know that there was a report recently from our schools that said that uh, even at the Ivy League level, there was a report actually from Columbia University, my alma mater that said that students, even at the Ivy League level, are struggling to read. They will not read long books. And, you know, this is just another one of the tragedies. Their, 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 their attention spans are, decre are ever decreasing. This, is, this spells a lot of trouble for our country. And it's happening more and more, the uh, attention deficit. So that is why at City Tutoring, we do not allow mobile phones. Anyone caught having a mobile phone, they have their phone confiscated. We do not, we, we actually find mobile phones in the classroom to be offensive. Uh, and not only because they are distracting, but also because they are downright disrespectful. So notice what the student wrote for question number one. Find a quadratic equation whose roots are one plus radical three and one minus radical three. Student writes x minus 1 radical 3 times x plus 1 radical 3, right? Uh, so they have confused this algebraic manipulation with, I don't know what this is, maybe imaginative doodling. So a quadratic equation, you know, is not this work of fiction. So I don't know how the student is getting A's with, especially on this chapter, but this is one of this is a standard question. I mean, you can let me know in the comments. You can let me know in the comments. Are you a teacher? Let me know in the comments. Is this is this too hard? I don't think this is hard at all. Not for algebra two. Not for honors algebra two. Maybe I'm going crazy. I don't know. But I don't think that this is a hard question. I I, 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 I an honor student should be able to do this, especially an A honor student. Now look at question number three. The equation 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0 has rational roots, true or false. The student says true because it is a real number, not like pi or radical 3. I mean, th this is ridiculous. You, you, know, you must admire the, their philosophical take on rationality. Unfortunately for the student, we have the discriminant, 
The discriminant tells you what kind of roots to expect. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, and it will tell no such tales. Here, if you take the discriminant, you have a value of 40, a number that is, of course, not a perfect square. No rational roots here, only irrational ones, much like the logic behind their response. So they're not teaching the discriminant in the school? I asked the student. By the way, the student knows I'm doing this. <laughs> I just, I'm not, and I'm not attacking the student. I'm, I'm going by, this is just to make our student, one of the strategies we do here at City Tutoring is to make the student realize just how bad the deficit in the gap in their knowledge is. We're not going to just tell you to feel good about yourself. We're going to show you what's going on. We're going to teach you to reason properly. So that's why I'm doing this with the student's permission, of course. I'm not giving out the student's name or anything like that. The student was shocked, horrified after they got this, after the student got this result. And I asked the student, I said, did you not ever go over the discriminant? They said, yes, they did. But they said they never told us about this particular instance about rational roots or irrational roots. Look at question number, uh, number two was correct, by the way. So that's why I didn't mention it. Number four, in the following equation, R is a real constant. Show that over the set of real numbers, there is no solution to this equation. The equation, in case you can't see it very well, is one over X plus R equals one over X plus one over R. The student wrote X is less than zero. What does that even mean? I, I have no idea what that means. Right? Next, we have for the number five was correct. It says for the function f, x, and y, y equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Fine. There were two parts to this question. A, the equation of the axis of symmetry of its graph. So the student says axis of symmetry is two thirds and it's the minimum value. Okay, fair enough. I would have liked to see a little bit more why, but it's okay. Number six, in the equation, y equals two parentheses x minus 16x, what constant number do you get when you complete the square? And the student writes, <coughs> excuse me, the student wrote x. So we have here the pièce de, de résistance. Excusez-moi le français. <laughs> right? Problem here. What constant do you get? X. So a constant that is as slippery as their understanding of quadratic forms. Never mind that if you actually distribute the equation, you have 2x minus 32x, right? And if you complete the square here, let me just double check something. Yeah, you have to complete the square. So completing the square will give you a very different constant, not some elusive X, which might, might as well be hiding in the Bermuda Triangle somewhere. Next part. Number seven, also wrong. If eight and zero are solutions to the equation Y equals BX minus X squared, what is the greatest value of this function in the interval negative six is less than x which is less than zero student wrote a question mark all right fair enough never be afraid to ask if you don't know i'd rather a student write i don't know we're going to figure it out we're going to discover it next part now we're in part b answer any three questions of your choice and i included in part b uh eight questions but you can choose three. So it was really a 10 question, not, not a long test at all. Uh, so the student attempted question number one here, a helicopter shuttle service operating between an airport and the center of a city charges a fare of $10 ca and carries $300, $300 passengers per day. The manager estimates that he will lose 15 passengers for each increase of $1 in the fare. Find the most 
uh, profitable fare for him to charge. By the way, there's a typo there. It should be carries 300 passengers per day, not $300 passengers. Uh, it makes it sound as if though they're worth $300. I do apologize for that. So, um, and the student had asked me about that too, but still got it wrong. So find the most profitable fare for him to charge. Student wrote $10. That's absolutely not correct. So that was wrong. Next one. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what you think number one should be and why. It's not a hard question if, you, if you're doing quadratics. Um, the next one, true or false? The square root of r, um, can't see where we are, r squared s to the fourth t squared equals the absolute value of r uh, s squared t. Student wrote true. And I marked it wrong because there was no justification to show why that was true. No work was shown. Um, you have to show for what values, obviously. And if it is a true statement, then you show me what values make it true or not true. The next one, number five didn't do, number six. Uh, okay, number six, student tried number six. That one, the student got correct. It says, true or false, negative parentheses A plus B can be written as parentheses negative A plus negative B. Why? Says, student says, true. Because if you multiply the negative to A and B, you get negative A and negative B. So writing them a different way does not change how the equation works. Also, a plus minus would become a negative. That's okay. I would have liked maybe, but that's not, you know, not a big deal. But I would have liked maybe they named the mathematical property that makes that true. If he had Dolciani's, Dolciani's book, the, the, the algebra book, he would know. But of course, we have Common Core now and all the other nonsense. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think of the results? Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased. We see a symphony of errors. We have a concerto of confusion. And dare I say, we have here a lot of mathematical misunderstanding. This is a very serious problem, by the way. These are cautionary, these are the cautionary tales that will haunt your exams if you choose to scribble this way without any thought or rigor. So mathematics demands respect, not wishful thinking. All right? So my advice to you all is do this from time to time. If you don't want to do it with city tutoring, that's okay, but you want to do it on your own time too. Check your knowledge. If you're an A student, check if you really are an A student. Test yourself constantly. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of assessments that I can give you. And I, I find this to be very troubling to me. So needless to say, the student is going to be enrolling probably very soon in our tutoring because the student needs the real mathematical truths. The student needs help. I told the, 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 the mother already, I said, your, your child really, really, really needs help because we cannot go on like this. And the mother, of course, being of a mathematical background, she almost was in tears when she saw this. So I hope my, my desire is to do my very best to help our students. And I'm going to give it my all. Every year, I'm going to give it more and more and more and more effort, God willing, as long as God gives me the strength. Thank you all, and happy 2025.